vitamin D deficiency has already become a huge concern all around the world. The only way to know whether you're vitamin D deficient is by testing serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D level. So it's important to have an awareness about the vitamin D testing and its deficient levels. Diagnosis of vitamin D deficiency should be made using a reliable assay for 25 hydroxy vitamin D. Testing for serum 125 dihydroxy vitamin D is not recommended. Available methods include competitive protein binding immunoassay, high performance liquid chromatography, combined high performance liquid chromatography, and mass spectrometry. Variability between assay methods and even between laboratories using the same method may range from 10% to 20%. Classification of samples as deficient or normal may vary by 4% to 32%. Different organizations have slightly different definitions for vitamin D deficiency based on serum levels of 25 hydroxy vitamin D. The Endocrine Society of US has described that serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D, less than 20 nanogram per milliliter is deficient. 21 to 29 nanogram per milliliter is insufficient, and more than 30 nanogram per milliliter is considered as optimal. According to the Institute of Medicine, Health and Medicine Division of the National Academies, less than 12 nanogram per milliliter of serum level of 25 hydroxy vitamin D is considered as deficient. 12 to 20 nanogram per milliliter is insufficient, and more than 20 is recommended as sufficient. The Mayo Clinic experts suggests that less than 10 nanogram per milliliter is severely deficient. 10 to 24 nanogram per milliliter indicate mild to moderate deficiency, while 25 to 80 nanogram per milliliter is optimal. The American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists says that less than 30 nanogram per milliliter is fall into vitamin D deficiency, and 30 to 50 nanogram per milliliter is optimal. Although the vitamin D deficiency is pandemic, neither the Endocrine Society, the Mayo Clinic, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force nor the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists recommends universal screening for vitamin D deficiency among the general population or asymptomatic individuals. However, they do recommend screening in these individuals with risk factors for vitamin D deficiency. Now if you fall into vitamin D deficient group, you must increase the intake of vitamin D. This can be accomplished by either increasing sun exposure or increasing dietary intake of vitamin D. Endocrine Society recommends that infants below one year should take 2,000 international units per day or 50,000 international units per week, up to six weeks to overcome vitamin D deficiency, and then followed by maintenance therapy of 400 to 1,000 international units per day. Children of age between 1 to 18 should take 2,000 international units per day at least 6 weeks or 50,000 international units once weekly for at least 6 weeks to achieve serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D of 30 nanogram per milliliter. Then they should maintain daily intake of 600 to 1,000 international units per day. Adults above 18 should take 6,000 international units per day or 50,000 international units per week for 8 weeks to achieve 30 nanogram per milliliter of 25 hydroxy vitamin D in blood, followed by maintenance therapy of 1,500 to 2,000 international units per day. Obese patients, those with malabsorption syndromes, and those on medications affecting vitamin D metabolism should receive a higher dose of 6,000 to 10,000 international units per day to achieve levels above 30 nanogram per milliliter. And they should intake vitamin D level of 3,000 to 6,000 international units per day. American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists recommends daily supplementation with vitamin D3 at a dose of 1,000 to 2,000 international units is typically needed to maintain an optimal serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D level. And also higher doses may be necessary in the presence of certain factors including obesity, malabsorption, and certain ethnicities. Transplant patients and older individuals may also need much higher doses. U.S. Institute of Medicine recommendations says that children and adults age 1 to 70 should intake 600 international units per day, while adults older than 70 should take 800 international units of vitamin D daily. Excess vitamin D supplementation can lead to hypercalcemia, but vitamin D toxicity is extremely rare. It generally occurs only after ingestion of large doses like 10,000 international units of vitamin D for prolonged periods in people with normal gut absorption. 
Patients with vitamin D toxicity can present with clinical symptoms of hypercalcemia including nausea, dehydration and constipation, or symptoms of hypercalciuria, such as polyuria and kidney stones. Most patients with vitamin D toxicity have levels greater than 150 nanogram per milliliter in blood.